Hello, folks. Welcome to Nate Land. Once again, we love having you. Uh, yeah, we're we're going to uh, start off as usual. Uh, as you use usual. Is that right? How do you say it? You, as usual? usual? Usual. I'm saying it wrong. Use, usual. Am I saying it right now? Now I've thought about it too much. <laughs> and now I'll never. Usual? Usual. How about like we always do? Like just, we always yeah, do. Just avoid it. <laughs> All right. Like we. Uh, hello, folks. Like we always do. I don't understand. Whoa, folks. Hello. Uh, goodbye. Hello. <laughs> goodbye. What does she say in Seinfeld? She says it in Bizarro World. Oh, up is down. Up is down. Good yeah. is bad. Uh, goodbye. Like we oh, saying this. Bad bye. Bad, bad bye. Yeah. yeah. Wouldn't it be bad bye? Yeah. Uh, all right. First up, Joshua Lott. I just want to tell you guys how grateful my friends and I are for this show. We've all been friends since sixth grade and are still in a group chat and generally have the same sense of humor. You three hit all of our interests as far as talking about anything and everything. Thanks for being a breath of fresh air. Your podcast has helped me through some dark times. My friend Daniel Begno, Begno listens to you guys on his way to chemo treatment every few weeks, and it brings a little added happiness to his day. Please give him a shout out so we can hear his name on here. Daniel Begno. Daniel, we could be saying it wrong. I think it's Dan Begno. Begno? Yeah. We hope it's Begno. Might be Bino, because it's B-E-G-N-O, so mm -hmm. what if it's just Bino? I think I spelled it like that. Now he's in a downer on the way to chemo. He's, just, he's like, I just turn it off. That Daniel just can't. <laughs> Because it's done. I've never liked this podcast. And Joshua and Josh was like, "Do you know?" I thought, and now one of them are out of the group chat. Uh, I love that they've been friends since sixth grade, and they talk yeah, that much. That's, that's cool. my favorite thing for people to not. They just you talk to the people you meet young, mm -hmm. and then you keep it rolling. Yeah, I love it. Uh, Zach Wright, dear Nate, Aaron, and Brumbledore. <laughs> I was, not I was not expecting to love your podcast, but I do. <laughs> it's hard to describe to friends, and it doesn't make sense. One guy reads Wik Wikipedia while the other guys jump in with jokes and in inaccurate facts. The third guy sits back and occasionally chimes in. I don't think that's true. Also, the guy with jokes reads comments at the beginning, but he doesn't read good. <laughs> On paper, that description doesn't work, but somehow in practice it does. I learned absolutely nothing from this podcast. In fact, I think I've gotten dumber. But it's just what I need. Keep up the good works, guys. Uh, yeah, I, that is a very funny. I was not expecting to love your podcast, but I do. It'd be a very funny way to, if you go on a first date, you know, and you tell a girl, your pictures look horrible, but I'll be honest with you, not that bad. Uh, when I see you in person, you look all right. Uh, yeah, I like all that. I'm fine with all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, he's right on with all of it. He's right on. None of this makes sense. Every we, time we post a clip on Twitter, I'm just afraid they're going to put a disclaimer saying that none of this stuff. None of this is fact check. It's fact, oh, it yeah. makes sense. I, we get banned. We read it on Wikipedia where <laughs> everybody gets to put their voice in. Lamen Salah. Layman. Layman Salah. He turn around <laughs> easily. He Maybe she would. Uh, please do a live Q and A. Maybe substitute for the comment reading. And if it's not too much trouble, notify me so I won't miss it. Thanks. <laughs> Lamine, we will be sure to get on it. We'll text yeah. him. Give him a, You'll give be him, the first one to know. <laughs> give a heads up. A live Q&A. That would not be bad. That'd be fun. Yeah, we do just take real questions. Mm -hmm. I'm just <laughs> describing what live Q&A means in case <laughs> someone's at home going, well, what does that mean? Uh, so take questions live. And answers. <laughs> and answers. That's the A part. Oh. <laughs> I thought it was questions and ask. <laughs> Kevin G doesn't want to give too much up. <laughs> the dynamics of the trio feels feels like an order for Nate to hang out with his buddy Aaron. His parents made him bring his little brother, bottomless Mimosa Bates, who every now and then makes his way into the conversation. Can't get enough of this educational podcast. We are on the educational podcast. Yeah. Yeah. That's hilarious. Some people, one person thought Brian was Nate's dad. <laughs> And Kevin G says Bates is like your little brother. How yeah. does that make you feel? It's a Benjamin Button situation. Uh, <laughs> so we've, we've, we're we we're, we're about to make that pass. <laughs> we're about to make the pass where it's going to start making sense. Right. It's real close. I was talking to Nate last night. And we were talking about the podcast. And he's like, you know, like I'm the guy that people say doesn't know how to read. And you're the old guy. And Aaron's the fat guy. And I was 
Well, wait a second. You're the one saying that about us. I don't say that. They that's what they that's what people are picking up from the picking podcast. Picking up, yes, from yeah. I'm someone. not saying it. You think I'm saying that you're the you know, I don't know. You I mean you're the old guy. That's <laughs> factual. That's the only factual thing we have on this podcast. I don't know how to read. And I think we know where the rest goes. Uh <laughs> but it kind of sounded like Michael Scott when he went to that seminar where he uh the other the other uh branches where he, how he remembers people's name. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Noel. Noel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> James Miller. Is Brian the is Brian the only one of you three that does any show prep? Nate strolls Boom. In, Nate strolls in there and can hardly remember to open his own show with hello folks. <laughs> and every time Nate states what episode he is recording, he is wrong. Aaron, on the other hand, reminds me of a friend of mine in high school who was always high and would just start <laughs> laughing at something and then not tell anyone what was so funny. The only show prep that Aaron does is trying to figure out what hat to wear. Yeah. They always say you're only as good as the people you surround yourself with, and this is a shining example of that because if Brian ever takes a week off, then Nate and Aaron are in big trouble. Boom. Thank that you, James. True. It's uh, your favorite comment you've ever gotten. It is. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't do the point of this is I don't I don't want to do show prep <laughs> for this. Uh, you know what I bring to the table is the multiple Netflix specials and stuff like that. <laughs> so I thought I thought that was uh, understood of just you know, but I guess that's not enough. I guess we got to bring a little bit more to that. Why are you here, James? You here because of Brian? You saw him at uh, Zany's. I wish. Uh, I mean, James Miller is. How I bet James Miller's got to be older than you. I love him. In my head, that's what I picture. Like it feels like a defending. <laughs> Why are y'all messing with that young guy right there? Yeah. No, James is right. Brian does do all the work, yeah. all the setup of all the information, uh, and Aaron does. It's not much. The hat. Uh, he does bring a hat. Yep, that's fun. Yeah. Now a hat of a different podcast. I didn't even think about what is that. It? Yeah, you didn't Sorry. think Water Champ, it's uh, Segura's podcast. It's Ooh. his favorite podcast. Uh, <laughs> James Frederick, has Bill Gates been listening to this podcast? He wants to dim the sun. Great work, folks. Yeah. he's That's what he wants to do. Yeah, he's in, he's on board with it. Yeah, if you're a billionaire and you uh, can do, afford and do whatever you want, mm -hmm. yeah, your ideas are going to get pretty wild. Right. That you just go, what if we dim the sun? It's because it's a guy that's, you know, why don't we have a grocery store in my house? And they're like, oh, we'll get one. Like, I mean, he could say that. Yeah. I don't want to go to the grocery store. Can we do one in the house? And they're like, yeah, of course. Uh -huh. That's, you know. If Bill Gates is listening to this, the world is in trouble. That's all I have to say. <laughs> what if he needs a break from being Bill Gates? From curing polio and stuff? He yeah. He just need an escape. I mean, it's a lot. You know? It is probably a lot, yeah. Just want to tap just out like, every now and then. Yeah, just, you, yeah. Does he ever get any just moment to... You know, I mean, the world problems are, yeah. I mean, you know, you're, you have that much money, you know? All right. I don't know, but he's probably not. Uh, Kate, C-A-T-E, Kate. Could be Kate. <laughs> <laughs> I listened to a stand-up album where the comedian got annoyed at the audience for laughing during the setup of the joke. Do any of you get annoyed when the audience laughs at the wrong part? I don't get annoyed when they laugh the wrong part. I always think that's pretty good that I got I got to laugh off of this part I wasn't expecting to get a laugh off. So I'm I'm excited about sometimes. I don't. So the one thing I can tell is if I feel like they're not really following and they're only laughing at kind of the big parts, but not the little kind of in little jokes that are sprinkled in. I don't get annoyed, but I can just tell like that show's going to be. Uh, they're going to laugh quicker. They're not laughing at everything. It's yeah. not going to be as drawn like. You know, laughs are, if, 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 if we always talk about like a quick laugh, an audience can have a quick laugh where they go, ha, ah, and then they all stop kind of very fast. And that same material, if you have a good rolling where people are laughing super hard, that material could, it could be an hour and a half. And then if they're quick laughers, you could do that same amount of material in 45 minutes. Yeah. Pretty crazy. Yeah, that's wild. And so sometimes you just know that, all right, this is going to be a pretty, we would always say it's kind of a tight crowd. Is a lot, a lot of comics say. And uh, so we just know like, hey, this crowd's kind of tight and you're going to have to either be real comfortable with silence more than usual, usual, mm -hmm. uh, or you will, or, you, you know, you got to just kind of pound them and just like stay on top of them. And then the shows, you try to make it be an hour instead mm -hmm. of whatever it was. 
Uh, Matt Curry, Nate, your story about the open micer with the ponytail reminds me of a buddy of mine, also an open micer. He had a super long goatee for a while and had a couple jokes about it. I'm pretty sure in one of them, he'd put it on his arm and say, look, Robin, look, Robin Williams, arm. Oh, I said that wrong. <laughs> He'd put it on his arm, the goatee on his arm, and say, look, Robin Williams' arm. At a certain point, he shaved it. But for at least a few months after that, he carried it around in a Ziploc bag to Mike's (laughs) and pull it out to do the jokes. Dude. Yeah, that's, I mean, (laughs) you're in the wrong business. That that sounds like somebody you'd see in an open mic. Yeah. And it's it's always good to be reminded there are crazy people everywhere. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you got to go to. I mean, that's you know. insane behavior. You're just sitting there and you're like, oh, I'm just doing five minutes. And I, oh, we need you to do 10. It's like, all right, I guess I got to pull it out. Uh, and he pulls out his goatee. Go He's on the way out the door. He's like, I got my wallet, keys. Uh, where's my hair? Where's, where's my, my hair? Goatee my hair. goatee hair. My beard. Mm. Uh, yeah, that seems crazy. Uh, but yeah, that's why open mics are great. That's why some people should go to open mics. You're going to see some guy. I'm not, maybe this person turned out to be great. A lot of comics start off doing weird stuff and they become great. But, uh, people should go to open mics because you, and you got to go up with the attitude of like, look, it's not a regular show. So you're not going to see Chris rock and don't expect a lot, but expect the insanity. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's what's, if you, if you like seeing a train wreck, an open mic's about the best place for yeah. you to go. It's better than music. It's better than anything because it's just, you know, music is like, I mean, maybe someone can be bad, but if they play a song you like, you yeah. can sing along with it. Uh-huh. I mean, I mean, it's just, dude, it's it's great. Uh-huh. It really is. You're going to see some crazies. You're going to see, yeah, yeah, some pretty wild stuff. But all the people you like started there, so you never know who yeah. you're going to see. Yeah, You're, you're know? going to see some really good people. And that's, and that's even, I think for, it would help us as comedians if people went to open mics and they could see, oh, that here's the difference of when someone gets really good versus yeah. how bad someone is. You're going to notice it in that show. You're going to yeah. see someone you're like, that, that guy, I kind of remember that guy. That guy was pretty good, mm-hmm. you know, or whatever. And then you're like, those other people were, it was terrible. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're a normal person that comes to an open mic just to watch, like comics will be so appreciative of you. It's like, oh man, we got a real, there are real people. Just here. real people. Yeah. We can yeah. treat it like a real show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not just. Yeah. Inmates running the asylum. Yeah, you know, and you're gonna sit. There, yeah, just go and you know, don't be a problem. Don't <laughs> yell anything, but just yeah, just go if you want to. You know, see how long you can stick. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> how long can you make it? Because yeah. if there's a real crowd, then everybody wants to go up. This is the time of year when the fantasy football losers show up to do. Open oh mics. yeah, a lot of that, mm-hmm. huh? It's yeah, like bachelor, it's like the bachelor party. Less than that now, just because COVID, oh, COVID and everything. COVID, but yeah, yeah that's normally true. that's true. They're full of them. But they bring their buddies with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's actually people like it. And as long as those, yeah, if that, if you are doing that, if you're hearing this, and that is one of your things, is the loser has to go do an open mic. The other guys, look, you can go cheer on your buddy, but like try to go at least be realist. Like you know, don't just ruin the show by thinking it's just you. Yeah, There's actually yeah. guys that are there that are trying it and your buddy's going to really try it. So let, you know, just be like, yeah, man, you got to go give it your best. And that person that's, a lo- you know, the one that lost that go give it your best. Cause maybe it's your thing. Yeah. Maybe you love it. I wonder how many actually come back. I've never seen uh, none that I've seen. Yeah. Yeah. Including their friends. Yeah. They, uh, well, they maybe. usually leave as soon as that person's done. That's why I put them up at the end. Yeah. That's what I did. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 A lot of times they like, go up last. I ran a show right across from Vanderbilt at the, uh, that beach bar. Mm-hmm. And there'd always be Vanderbilt oh, kids yeah. that would walk over. You yeah. put them up last. So yeah. I didn't have to stay. Yeah. 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 We're on to you. <laughs> <laughs> that's what comedians we know. When a regular person comes in, that's at an open mic, we don't have any money. We have nothing. That's all we got is a live audience member that's not a comedian. So we, I mean, it is like a rush to try to be like, let me on. Yeah. And then you got to try to like other guys got to get on that are really funny. And like, you got to try to, you know, then you get to see, I mean, it's a, a, a regular crowd. You walk into an open mic, you can change the whole show. Yeah. Cause once you sit down and you're normal, then the comics that have been doing it for a while are going to go up and like, it's going to be like, Oh, let's go. Let's the order changes. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Everybody gets a little more proper. Yeah, yeah. Like everybody, you know, and it's oh, like we're gonna try tonight. We gotta, yeah, yeah, yeah. you gotta really do it. Yeah, which is good. For, which really helps the comedians. Adam, ordering a glass of milk at a restaurant on a first date, power move or just off putting? 
Love the podcast, boys. Ordering a glass of milk at a restaurant on a first date. It's off-putting. I don't understand. He's asking, is that a cool move for the first date? Yeah. Or is that going to just turn the girl I off? I have a power move because my bones are strong. Well, is it a is it a cool move to impress? You let, you let her know. I got strong bones. No, it's 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 got to be off putting. It would be off putting if you did it with your best friend. Yeah, I'm off put by hearing that you might that you're thinking about doing this. You don't order. You know who orders milk at a restaurant? My eight year old daughter. And you think she wants milk at the table? No, she wants a sprite, and she only gets to get milk because Laura makes her get milk. I mean, if she's with me, I always end up getting her. She gets chocolate milk or something. Like I, I, I always, I fold under pressure. But I mean, on a date, ordering milk. I mean, if, look, if you are, maybe it sticks out in their head. If you're like, wait, you better have something behind this. You better be able to go on a rant. If you're relying on that to like shake yeah. things up, you got problems. I mean, I mean, it is a power move, but it's probably not going to a power. A I don't know if it's a power move. It's it's not a power move. I mean, it, that would be. You know, pulling your goatee out of a bag would be a power move. <laughs> and that might be the same guy. <laughs> he's like, yeah. Yeah, that's what he's going to go do. Yeah. Uh, it'd be better just to talk about, I thought about, what if I ordered right. milk? It, yeah. Almost that would be better. That'd be funny. Just going, I thought about ordering milk. Yeah. And then. Can I get a milk? No, nah, yeah, just kidding. I'll yeah. get a something like that. Yeah. She's going to tell that story to her friends for years. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Bill, De- if you don't like her. Maybe order milk <laughs> if you yeah. want out. That would be actually, that is a good. If you're now trying to you're, tank the yeah, date. Yeah, you're route. like, this is not going to work. Uh, can I get a couple milks? One backup? You order <laughs> one for her? <laughs> yeah. You want? I mean, I'll, yeah. <laughs> uh, we're taking milk, please. Bill Dempsey. Billy Dempsey. Hello, folks. I was thinking about your Krispy Kreme challenge and couldn't remember if you had heard of the Krispy Kreme challenge in Raleigh, North Carolina. Runners run two and a half miles to a Krispy Kreme. They are given a dozen donuts to eat and then must run another two and a half miles all in one hour. Uh, I The only reason I've heard about that, uh, a buddy of mine that I've golfed with, Jeff Carpenter, has done this. He's a real in-shape dude. Uh, and that's who does stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm going to walk to those Krispy Kremes <laughs> and I'm going to eat a dozen <laughs> and then uh, I'll probably eat them as I walk to the next. <laughs> but that, I mean, that's a lot. That's yeah. it makes it yeah it's fun I guess it makes it something different you know those good people eat it and they feel like they run it off. Mm-hmm. Uh, have y'all heard of it? I have. I've heard yeah, of yeah. one like I had a friend that did one where you got tricked into it with uh, they go you maybe want some Krispy Kremes you're like yeah dude I would love some <laughs> oh there's one about two and a half <laughs> miles away <laughs> all right oh, I'll drive yeah no we're not driving. no 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 it's all blocked off. <laughs> Now that I saw an ESPN thirty for not a thirty for thirty, but yeah, is that little, serious. What if I told you yeah. you could have a yeah, dozen donuts, yes. Aaron? Yeah, if you just walk <laughs> this way. <laughs> a little segment about it on the Sports Center. Yeah, what were you say? Uh, I had a buddy that did something similar where you d- drink like a certain amount of beers. Yeah, and then you have to run a mile. Yeah, but you're kind of buzzed. Yeah. No. Uh. All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Mar- <laughs> that I mean that would be something crazy. You get you get to get drunk, and that's yeah. you know it's pretty fun. You add some you know heavy machinery into. This, uh, <laughs> uh, you drink a couple beers, Nyquil, <laughs> then drive a bulldozer. And like, oh, okay, I'll try. Meredith Caldwell. When I was in college, I would use a different email every month to get the month free for new users on CBS All Access. Well, apparently I forgot to cancel one of the free trials before they charged me and couldn't figure out the email and password combination. So not only could I not cancel, I couldn't I, I couldn't watch the stuff I was paying for either. It ended up charging six forty eight to my card every month for <laughs> seven years because I kept forgetting and I didn't feel like calling them to explain why it happened. Seven years and five hundred and fifty dollars later, I canceled that card because it was stolen. And they finally stopped charging me. Too bad that's all it took, or I could have done that seven years ago. Wow, that's crazy. I mean, not to uh, God. I mean, how much money? I would love to know how much money they make on stuff like that. Yeah. Like, how much is their business is just built on just you're not going to call. And, I dare you to call and cancel. Mm-hmm. They offer it to go. No, it's free. Cancel mm-hmm. whenever you want. Mm-hmm. I mean, Planet Fitness is doing that where they're cancel whenever you want. Yep. 
yeah, go ahead. And you go, all right, all right, I'll show you. And they go, okay, show me, show me. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then they watch you walk to their van and drive <laughs> off, and they go, we'll never see that guy again. But we got his money. Sucker. Yeah. <laughs> it's a loser. We got his money. Uh, all right. Uh, so this week, uh, this is a, we've uh, pre-recorded this. Uh, just so if you're watching this, uh, Laura left me. <laughs> uh, no, she's still here. But uh, so we uh, wanted to record one, one that we've been asked about a lot. We talked about it a long time ago. People brought it up and, uh, and I'm interested in it uh, is the middle ages. Uh, something that I, uh, I, I mean, I, I don't know if I know anything about them. Mm -hmm. It's funny that it says middle ages cause it's, I mean, it seems like there's an end, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like there would be an end time. Mm -hmm. I'm middle aged, right? 40, mm -hmm. middle age, 41. Uh, you're, he's not middle aged. No. Close thirties, mm -hmm. 30 middle aged. Yeah. The close on, depends on what your life expectancy yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. So you're. <sighs> I mean, I back know. half <laughs> with the gout thing, uh, you know. I'm so, over the hill, man. No, you're not no, middle ages. No. Your foot is. <laughs> uh, so you're saying we can call them the middle ages for now, but thousands of years ago, it won't make any sense to call them that. Or, no, or in the future, thousands yeah. of years in the future, I mean. Yeah, because it's, it's, I mean, yeah. Because there's other ages. Is that, do they say ages? or? Yeah, it really doesn't make sense to call it that now. But yeah, it doesn't fit in the time now. Mm -hmm. It doesn't fit into it. You know, are you middle ages? <laughs> I mean, I thought about this the other day. I'll be 50 later this year. Yeah. The average life expectancy is around mid to late 70s. Well, I'm almost two thirds of the way done. Yeah. Oh, you can't, you can't start doing that. <laughs> yeah. You can't start doing the math. No, it's you know? fine. Let them do it. <laughs> uh, someone's got to do it, you know? <laughs> Everybody, I think was, everybody was doing it in their head to begin <laughs> with, so it's like, why not, you know? <laughs> I mean, to be middle, truly middle-aged means I'd have to live to be 98 right yeah. now. Yeah. It's not without... Not, not crazy. No. It's not crazy with the technology mm -hmm. we're having. Do you want to live that long? 98? If I'm healthy? Yeah. Why yeah. would... I, who doesn't... Who goes, that's enough? I know people do that as jokes. Your grandmother, right? Yeah, no, if you get to a certain point where all you, everybody in your life has died, you're just like, all right, I'm I'm about ready. Yeah. You know? I I think uh I know comics do it as jokes or you go you can you can say that, but I I just can't imagine unless you lived a, a horrific life. Yeah. And it's I just and you're maybe you're if you're in tremendous pain or mm -hmm. you're going through something like that, uh I, I, but I, I, that's the only yeah. reason, and I mean that part. I think that they they feel bad. Otherwise, I, I think, and no one really has a you know. You're not going to hit a number and go, "That's good." Yeah, I think you'd want to yeah, be a hundred. I, I agree with you. Yeah, yeah, that's how I'd feel. Yeah, I want to be a hundred. Larry King, a lot of old people were like, "I'm ready to go." He wasn't. He was like, yeah. "I do not want to die." Yeah, he was still yeah. working. Yeah, he said that on podcasts, and yeah, and he was like, "No, I don't want to go." And wow, he was very honest about it. Yeah, I mean the the. Yeah, I I I I think I, I you don't want to go. I think you think in general you do, but then you know what are you gonna do? You know <laughs> what are you gonna do, Aaron? If yeah. you die, I don't know. You know, <laughs> schedule it. might fill up. <laughs> it's gonna be hot down there, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. You can't. That's what someone would say that knows they're going to hell. They're like, I just can't take these cold winters anymore. I'm just ready to get <laughs> just ready to get to it. There you go. I just need to get warmed up. I need to get warmed up here a little bit. Uh, so middle ages, I, I don't think I could guess the time. Yeah. I don't think I could have either before. 1300. I, yeah. That's it? Well, that's in there. That's it's a very there. broad it's a range. big span, right? The 500 to 1500? Yeah. Kind of that. We will be middle Did ages. Did you look that up? I yeah. think maybe a while ago. Yeah. Yeah. Like Tuesday? Cool. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's basically around 500 to 1500. Which is a huge range yeah that's yeah, ridiculous because think about it, if you back it up 500 years a thousand to year 2000 mm -hmm. you'd be furious if everyone just lumped you in I know. <laughs> that one well i think we will probably be middle ages yeah what are they going to call us what are we um i think we're the technology age or something like that yeah there's all kinds of different ages so it, it comes in between the middle ages came in between the fall of the roman empire 
and the Renaissance. Yeah. And the Middle Ages is also called the medieval period. Same yeah. thing if you're ever mm-hmm. medieval or the dark ages. It's often called the dark ages. Yeah. Cause it's dark a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It got dark very early. <laughs> no, because, uh, the Romans after the Roman empire fell, they were like very cultural and they kept great records and they were on top of stuff. And then after that, everything kind of went into chaos. It's just known as a time. There wasn't a lot of scientific advancement, not a lot of charts, not a lot of graphs. Yeah. yeah. You'd I love it. Be, I might have loved the middle ages. <laughs> yeah. Just, you just thrived. Yeah. Just been like, yeah, just not on top of you thinking like we got to get better. It's yeah. like, no, we're, we're good. Yeah. The fact that they can lump in a thousand years together tells me there wasn't a lot going on. Yeah, and then there's there's different there's like early Middle Ages, late Middle Ages. Yeah. But generally speaking, Middle Ages, the Romans kept great records. They were great with stuff. And then the Dark Ages, there's just a lot of wars, just a lot of mm-hmm. just not the best of times, plagues, stuff like that. How long did people live then? Um, the life expectancy was like thirty to thirty five. Yeah. But again, there wasn't a ton of people dying at 35. It's just that so many people die in childbirth that the average. Oh. That messed the average like up. Like yeah. one out of every yeah. five kids died. Yeah. I think if you get, as an adult, I think you live to like 60 or something. Yeah. But. If you just make it past, it's like a turtle. <laughs> just like a turtle. Yeah. Odds are you're not. If you make it out of. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the same thing. Same thing. So the Roman Empire basically ruled. Now we're talking about America's not even a thing yet. Yeah. Unless you're a Native American. So we're basically talking about Europe. And the Roman Empire basically ruled most of the known world, most of Europe, other places. Then it starts falling apart and they lose their power. And then it's kind of getting chaotic. And then the Catholic Church becomes the most powerful That's right. entity. Oh, and then it began. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what they what did you guys do to just get control, you know? Uh, well, it's, if you're just right about stuff, then people kind of... <laughs> That's what it was? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I looked that up because they yeah. made everyone tithe 10%. Everybody had to tithe 10% to church. Mm-hmm. And the church was... Whether made. you win or not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So they got all their wealth during this period. But I was trying to figure out what made them do it. Did they have an army or what? It seemed like they just guilted people. Oh, there's you, probably some bloodshed going on. Yeah. But I think a lot sure. of it was just guilting. Do you want to go to heaven or not? You better give mm-hmm. 10%. But the Pope became the most powerful person in the world, and the Catholic Church started kind of running things. I mean, there's kings and That's queens, pre- yeah. But the the Catholic Church kind of called the shots That's during right. this period. That's pretty crazy. Southern Baptists never took off like that, you know. <laughs> you would they love just, to. You would love to. Yeah. Good. Yeah. You guys were, you know, we're not evil. Uh, <clears throat> you got to have. <laughs> my parents were. What, Catholic, what would your but, Vatican be? The Southern Baptist. Southern Baptist. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Cracker Barrel. <laughs> <laughs> Probably do a lot of stuff out of there. That's that's yeah. your Sistine Chapel. Yeah. Where yeah. is a Cracker Barrel? I think yeah. that's where it gets started. Yeah. After Sunday, you go you go to Cracker Barrel and you get you, you, we get some ideas flowing. You see who can do the triangle T thing, <laughs> yeah. and if they can't, you know, if they get to four, you're like, all right, yeah. and you tell them about what the plan is, and if they just cheat or like they can't they leave eight and then you're like all right and kind of get them out <laughs> you know and it's and we, and we sit yeah. on the rocking chairs uh-huh. and then we get called in yeah to talk to them that's your conclave right let there. the kids go look at the toy section yeah sounds buy, fun about some buy some unverified uh vanderbilt titans gear they always have hats that are <laughs> like just like you know, they always got that weasel thing attached to a ball, too. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Um, put your hand down harder if you don't. <laughs> I mean, you just gave up. I'm just disappointed, dude. <laughs> do you do? Do you ever, when you put your hand down, ever control it, or you just let it? <laughs> do you do a little drop? Are you always just a just a drop? <laughs> Was that that hard of a drop onto the table? Hmm. Uh, someone in Iowa heard it, so <laughs> I don't know. You ask, let's ask them. You know, like that's. Uh, I like the idea though of when you drop your hand, if you just you just give up at the end, <laughs> like you don't when you set your hand down on yeah. stuff. You, there's no. There's Some people just, sit like that. Your people sit like that. Oh, like yeah. that last few seconds are just yeah. a free fall. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They the first the first seconds are to confirm the chair is there. Yeah. And then right. the last seconds are yeah, the, just just let it go, just, just drop. Trust that it's there. Oh. This is what I'm talking about. That weasel ball. 
Oh, you yeah. see that oh, thing? Yeah, that yeah, thing's yeah, always yeah, sitting yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it goes around. Yeah, that's fun. Uh, uh, sounds like a toy from the Middle Ages. <laughs> the weasel ball. That's it. The Middle Ages goes, this is where you guys got to? <laughs> you call us the Dark Ages. Yeah. <laughs> we don't know what's going on, but y'all, we, this was y'all advanced to? You're like, well, it's a fun. It's got different colors and stuff. Uh, yeah. Who likes that toy? I think is it for dogs? Is it for dogs? I could see that being for dogs. Yeah, uh, I hope it's for dogs. No, I always wanted. What one if it's not? <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it is fun. Yeah, yeah. It rolls around. It looks like there's a little thing yeah. attached to it. I'll get it. Okay. There's an episode of Seinfeld where they're doing the trying to do the roommate switch, and George says, uh, "Do you realize in the history of Western civilization, no one has successfully committed?" Uh, accomplish the roommate switch in the middle ages you could get locked up for even suggesting that <laughs> yeah, yeah and cherry says there weren't roommates in the middle ages and then george says well at some point in the, between the year 800 and 1200 there had to be two women living together yeah <laughs> that's the middle ages that's the middle yeah. ages i wonder if they did live together like roommates you know like live you I mean you had to i'm sure there was families and tribes and mm-hmm. so the system was basically feudalism which was peasants that worked land of some lord of the manor Serfs, and, right? Yeah. And then the the ruler, the nobleman, the lord, or whatever, would let them live on that land in return. Yeah. So they'd raise crops. They'd do all the work. He'd make the money off the crops. Yeah. In return, they get to live there. And mm-hmm. that was kind of the... That's what almost everybody It's kind did. of the operation when me, I have my house. <laughs> what, what do you mean? Same idea. I don't know. But the same <laughs> philosophies. <laughs> I like what they're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> I can get on board with this yeah. feudalism yeah. thing, man. Yeah. Yeah. So this was like any movie game. Of, you guys didn't watch Game of Thrones, no. No. which is a fictional world, but uh, kings, queens, yeah. knights, jesters, dragons, no dragons, but maybe, well, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't there. I don't, I can't prove there wasn't. <laughs> Could have been. <laughs> Could have been. Well, a couple of dinosaurs that. still walking around. Is that what? Do we think dragons are dinosaurs? No, I don't know. Komodo dragons. Komodo dragons. Ooh, that's a good one. That's technically a dinosaur. Well, I didn't mean to get off on that, but uh, <laughs> court jesters. Court jesters were the original comedians. Yeah, what were they all about? So they were also called licensed fools. Yeah, yeah, and they weren't like they were actually held in high esteem to some degree. They weren't just licensed fools. Yeah, yeah. The king liked them. They could make jokes about the king that no one else could make mm-hmm. and get away with it. Yeah. They uh, warmed up the crowd. They wore the bright outfits like you imagine with the crazy hat, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. But they juggled. That's they- pretty good that they got to do a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's ju- pretty good that they, almost like the kings knew, like, I got to let some, like, some release mm-hmm. of what's going on. Mm-hmm. And if you do that, then you can do whatever you want. Yeah. Like if I make fun of myself, I know it's crazy. You can't. I know, you know, all right, we cut your aunt's head off. I get it. (laughs) I get that you're upset. (laughs) But, you know, and then as you do it, and you're like, and then you're like, yeah, well, your mom's head's off, (laughs) by the way. And this, I figured this was the time to tell you. Yeah. Because I think they cut people's heads off all the time during this. I think that was regular. You just see that. That's yeah. just how you died back then. Yeah. Well, they had. You ex- didn't die as a baby. You they had executioners go. for sure. Yeah. And if they didn't cut your head off, they, a lot of hangings, a lot of public hangings going yeah. on. Mm. But the court jester also gave people bad news. Like the king, they often had to give the king the bad news because, like, you break it to him and do it in a funny way. So there's an example. Goes, pick a card. <laughs> pick a card. Pick a card. There's other guards outside the door. Pick a card. <laughs> there you go. Your wife was kidnapped. <laughs> two? Did you pick a two? <laughs> That's just what they, he's just trying to go. Hey, what's that? Yeah. Your wife's been kidnapped. <laughs> but that was the right card. Yeah. Right. And he's like, that's pretty good. Um, Francis complete naval. Naval fleet got completely destroyed by the English, and the jester had to go tell the Francis king that their navy was completely destroyed, all their ships destroyed. So he said, he told the king, those English don't even have the guts to jump into the water like our guys do. That was his joke. Um, yeah. Just to, so, just to soften the, the ground a little bit. Yeah. yeah, that was his big joke. I would like to say, 
All our oh, guys are yeah, now floating, yeah. floating dead yeah. in the water. Yeah. Yeah. Those guys are afraid to get yeah. wet. So do you think the jester, are they just on call in the castle at all times? Yeah. Just like, I'm here to just... But you're on call has some leeway because I think you there's not a phone, so you got to go chase them down. <laughs> and so you're, you know, it's it's not like like now on call is like you're straight up. Uh-huh. It, within seconds, you're alerted. Yeah. But you might, might have a week head start. You're on call, but a week, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. There was an example of a young, I mean, sometimes babies were born as kings and there was a young teenage king and he never read any of the royal decree. He, did, he signed papers, didn't even know what he was signing, the documents. So the jester wrote a royal decree. I'm de- listening. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the jester wrote a royal decree that made himself ruler of all of Scotland for 15 days and the king signed it without looking. He, he tricked a baby into signing yeah. No, this was a teenager. Yeah. Still. After this, the Kid. king never again signed a document without. F- it was a first baby. It carefully. <laughs> and the baby signed. That's it. what he The baby signed is a two-year-old. <laughs> Can you believe that he tricked the two-year-old? <laughs> but uh, my favorite jester was Roland the Farter. <laughs> <laughs> what did he do? <laughs> he was a. Mi- <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you, he was a me- medieval flatulist. Who lived what in was hold on. hold on that was the reminds me of, what's the uh craig what's that movie with craig robinson uh time yeah it's like time hot tub, hot tub time machine. hot tub time machine so and craig robinson's hosting last comic standing greg geraldo one of the greatest comedians ever yeah who passed away but uh he's uh he's hosted and then craig robinson tells me he goes oh i got a new movie out it's called hot tub time machine greg geraldo goes what's that about <laughs> <laughs> there's like a very funny quick that was a very <laughs> extremely yeah. funny thing to do. They did it on it was on TV. Yeah. Oh, what was that? What's the hot tub time machine about? <laughs> like, hey, like, well, it's hot tub. All right. <laughs> well, Roland the Farter was a medieval flatulist, lived in England. He was given 30 acres of land in return for his service as jester for King Henry II. Each year he was obliged to perform one jump, one whistle, and one fart for the <laughs> king's Christmas party. <laughs> <laughs> One jump? He had to do them all at the same time. <laughs> a jump, a whistle. And a fart. So he had to like just jump in the air? Whistle and fart all at the same like, time. Like do exactly what you're saying. So just yes. do a jump in the air, whistle and fart. I think we got a new Krispy Kreme challenge. Uh, I mean, this is... Uh, <laughs> I would love to just be around him leading up to that week. Yeah. What's he eating? He's just eating with the horses. He's just like He's practicing. in the barn. <laughs> That's got to be harder. Than looks. Yeah. But he had to I think able- a lot of older guys do it on accident. <laughs> I think they do all those things. I think yeah. I think my dad can do it. Yeah. Just tell an old man to try to jump and then it'll yeah. happen. Yeah. <laughs> if you go just jump, all of those other things will. We'll try to whistle. Yeah. <laughs> So this is just this king. This was just his thing, man. He just thought this was the funniest thing. In the his world. whole party did every year. You do a Christmas party. I mean, it's still doing like, pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Call Rowan the farter. Is he available? Y'all, y'all got to see this. Did guy they Rowan. have? It said Christmas. Like they did Christmas. Yeah. And then the Christmas party. That's all he did. They get paid. <laughs> yeah. He got thirty acres of land. Yeah. And then they just grew their own food and stuff. I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. The money wasn't really. I mean, they had money. I don't. I don't know. How, all that how much should he have been paid? This was that? 12th century England, you know, so eleven. this is the year 1100. To fart. To do it, well, I mean, if, if the main guy wants it, the money's, doesn't, you know, 30 acres. It's a lot. It's, it's a, a lot. lot of land. Yeah. It's a lot of land. But, I mean, you're in the Middle Ages, there's just nothing around. Like, that might not be a lot of land. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I mean, there's, un- America's, no one's over here, but Native Americans. There's a lot of unclaimed land. Mm-hmm. Here's 30 acres. Yeah. This is in England. In England. Yeah. And then you got, yeah. I hope it's in a good spot. I hope those people are watching. When they, I mean, that's pretty fast. What if you're in the bathroom? You're like, oh, I yeah. missed it. Yeah. <laughs> Can you do it again? Yeah. I missed the entertainment. Not till next year. Yeah. It's funny to be like, he has to do it all at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what makes it hard. Yeah. We can all do the other three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And like, what's, uh, what's Roland doing this year? Same yeah. thing he did last year. Dude. <laughs> yeah. Same act. Yeah. Nate's, the, I can tell the wheels are turning. You're like, yeah. could we do that? <laughs> I can't whistle, so I'm out right away. But I, but I make up for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and when you jumped into the other thing, I'll bring in the whistle, like, 
<laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> Each one of us could do one of the things. <laughs> Um, oh man! So then they tell him like five minutes. They're like five minutes of showtime. He's like, right. <laughs> and he asks everybody to leave his green room. He's like, do you guys mind getting out? And then he's just like, I just need some time to just gather my thoughts a little. <laughs> like he's like, you know, it's like, all right, man, have a good show. He's like, I appreciate it. You know, thanks, man. Yeah. And then he's just jump whistle. JWF, JWF, JWF. <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes out there and, <laughs> jump, and, he goes, ah, and they just shoot him I don't know if they had guns but they shoot him and they, they publicly hang him and the king's like how does he not get it it's funny you gotta do the it is the do you do the the fart as the land <laughs> could be the land oh interesting yeah. yeah and maybe that's the you know you're like ah, what, what order are you gonna go in and he's like <laughs> I guess you better be there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess you better show up and see because I got something nice and planned. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, He's eating a big turkey leg. <laughs> you know, it's just like. Yeah, what order are you doing? I'm going to feel the crowd out. Yeah. We'll see. I'm not completely sure. Mm. There's not a microphone. Mm -hmm. I think maybe you jump off a table or something, get a little, little what if it didn't little make, air time. What so if it you... didn't make noise? And then he's got to be like, I swear I did. It's and he goes, I didn't. And then someone has to walk over and they're yeah, like, come here. he goes, nah, he did it. He did it. I, I, yeah, he did it. He goes, I told you. And he goes, and the king's like, all right, technically, uh, like he's just kind of putting a hard, he's like, all right, all right. This is a lot of, a lot of questions. If I could go back in time, I would maybe ask these. I would want to go, I'd walk right to the king first. Yeah. Or the court gesture and be like, so what's, you know what happened? How did how did he sell the show to the king? Did the king just see him do it? Do you think? I don't think there was a lot going on back then. I mean, yeah. I think this these were three of the main things people do. I mean, I'm you know, out. These yeah. were jumping, whistling, and farting. Were like, I mean, that's. I think there's a picture of it. That's entertainment. Yeah. Wait, what? Of rolling the farter. You just want to see what the guy looks like. Well, it's probably a painting, right? Yeah, but that's a not regular that painting, picture. No. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah, now I get it more. <laughs> he is uh oh jeez. <laughs> There's some yeah. little two in detail <laughs> yeah. drawings of uh our boy Roland. Wow. He was a legend. He was. Hmm. That's incredible. You think that was I'm just wondering how, how long was he a gesture? Uh, I don't know. Let's see. What his age was right up. Yeah. The, the role in the farter. He has a Wikipedia page. Uh -oh. It's more than I got. <laughs> oh, it doesn't have his age on there, does it? Yeah. <laughs> one jump, one whistle, and one fart for the king's court at Christmas. Unum saltum et sultum. <laughs> That's how they said it. Yeah, they said it. Just Each year he was he had his he had to do an unum saltum <laughs> et stiftum et unum. Bumbleum, bumbleum, and then the bumbleum. You're like, all right, I get the bumbleum. What's the other stuff? That's how the bumbleum kind of makes sense. You're like, okay, I understand that. But what's the other stuff? A uh, jump and a whistle. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hmm. That says he was giving Hemingbone Hemingstone Manor, so he was given a a manor. Yeah. For his wow. work. Wow. Hmm. I love you just brushed over flatulist like that's a real job title. Or well, like I mean, that. it was then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Flatulist. Wow. Yeah. Mm. He's there. If you're, are there flatulists now? Like, is that are. a regular job? Look up and see if it's a regular job. Cause I mean, this might be the, you know, is this like their Richard Pryor? <laughs> if you're in the flatulist world, you got a list of notable flatulists. Yeah, it's a small so list. So there's Mr. Methane. <laughs> He's a contemporary <laughs> flatulist. Yeah. Uh, you got Roland the Farter's kind of the... He's, He's like the, the, no, well, the Carlin oh, yeah. of the... And then Will the Farter. Howard, the Howard Stern. Stern Show. Yeah, 2007 to, wow, 2008. That's it. <laughs> so it was uh, huge in the, you know, in the Middle Ages. And yeah. then Will, Le, the, Will the Farter brought it back. Le Petome... He performed in France from 1887 until 1914. That's a long time. <laughs> then it finally got old. 
And I bet everybody asks his wife, does he just do it all the time at home? She goes, no, not as much as you would think. It's like he doesn't. Same questions y'all asked Laura. Is he funny all the time? He's like, no, I mean, he doesn't. He's pretty healthy at home. Uh, he doesn't. He's pretty, you know. So you think in the year 1915? Well, who's Mr. Methane? Mr. Methane, contemporary flatulist. Uh, uh, 1991. Yeah. He b- briefly retired in 2006, but restarted in <laughs> mid-2007. I'm back in it. Yeah. Just when they pull me out. He got bored. <laughs> he claims to be the only performing farter in the world. Mm. Good for him. He worked on the railways before focusing on this. Well, anyway, I got a lot I of think stuff he here on the middle. He's yeah, able to focus sorry. on it the whole <laughs> He was able to focus on it the whole time, on the rail, the railways. Yeah, he worked, yeah. He worked on the railroad. Like he's like, I didn't take it seriously. He was like, oh, were you doing it? He's like, oh yeah, dude, I was, I was doing it. Yeah, I've been doing it the whole time. I just, you know. Another big thing in the king's court was dwarfs, court dwarfs, and so uh, jesters were only part time employees. Court dwarfs were like per- permanent in the king's court. There was. Uh, the personal dwarf and the chamber dwarf and the court dwarf. And the king liked them sitting next to him because it made the king look much larger and it made his power position look more powerful. Mm -hmm. So they, um, so dwarfs live lives of privilege in that time. They got good money benefits. It says, um, what is the benefits? I think I mean, what protection? Health maybe? insurance. Uh, yeah, probably protection. Yeah, yeah. Stuff yeah, that's like real legit benefits. Yeah, four hundred one k protection and food. For, you know, <laughs> it's like I don't. You like I mean, if there were dentists. You just someone knocks your tooth out with a hammer, and he's like, ah, oh, it's free. You're like, God, oh, thanks, man. He's just bleeding <laughs> from the mouth. And the, the benefits paid for that. A favorite dwarf of Peter the Great received a state funeral, including miniature horses and a small priest. Hmm. Oh. It seems nice. like they didn't need to do that. They could have just given him yeah. a regular priest. It was probably. I mean, they're they're watching a guy whistle and jump. And far, I mean, I don't. You know, I don't think they're above anything. You know, like I don't. That's a little on the nose to yeah. use miniature horses to carry his body. I don't think they were. Yeah. Can you imagine? Imagine then tell them some of the problems we've had here now. These people that like they would. They wouldn't even understand. They'd be like, what? Like, you're just whatever typical stuff we have where you're like, that guy says mean stuff a lot. And they're like, oh, okay. Um, Archery became a big thing in that time just for protection because during wars and stuff like that. So the king made, uh, in England at least, a requirement. Every Sunday, men had to practice archery every Sunday just to become good archers. Mm. Yeah, I mean that that's a I mean such a tough way to yeah. fight a battle. I mean oh, you just going to get hit. Mm-hmm. You're like, "Oh, it's no fun." Mm-hmm. An arrow. And this isn't like even just like up close. This is when they launch from long distances yeah. and it just comes yeah. down and hits you from And it's a slow like you see it coming yeah. you're trying to run, but there's 15 of them. Yeah. yeah. So then um golf was invented. Oh. oh. In oh. Scotland, and it became such a problem because everyone was playing that the king <laughs> decreed no one can play golf because they need to practice their archery. Wow. <laughs> everyone was playing golf on Sundays. He actually <laughs> outrolled golf and football, soccer, um, during that time. There's a Robin Williams is a joke about golf starting. Creating it. Yeah, yeah creating it. Very Scotland, fun. right? Yeah. Yeah. But then that was King James the Second. King James the Fourth lifted the ban about fifty years later because he became a golfer himself. Wow! And he got addicted to it, and he had the first set of special make clubs made by um, a bow maker. Made him a set of clubs. Big Bertha. I don't think so. I don't, <laughs> no, don't know Big Berthas sure. are now. <laughs> no, I know. Big Bertha sounds like it could be. <laughs> yeah. That was his wife that hated that he golfed that day. <laughs> Big Bertha. <laughs> he goes, you going to get a play today? I can play nine. Big Ber- you can imagine Big Bertha's <laughs> on my case about. <laughs> so this was in 1502 when he got the club. Would they play 18 holes? I don't think so. The first, so St. Andrews is the oldest yeah. course. And that opened in 1574. That's a Lynx course. That was past the Middle Ages. Yeah. 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 That's, that's true. And there's some old old school golf, man. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, it was just the ball was made a, of wood. Yeah. Just hidden into a hole. What about his swing there? What do you think about that? Uh, <laughs> Compared to mine. It's not good. 
<laughs> he's gonna have to shift all that weight over. <laughs> yeah. So Bates swing. <laughs> Bates hits the ball. That's me, by the way. <laughs> and then finishes the swing. Well, so what do you mean? The ball is hit, and then he gets into the proper release form. That back foot I lift. So he lifts the back. So the, his ball is 100 <laughs> yards away from him, and then he lifts his back foot up. It's almost like the way like a gymnast lands, and then they like yeah, yeah. but they gather their thoughts. Uh-huh. Like that's how the. If the video of Bates, yeah, it's pretty great. Yeah, because it's the ball's gone. Yeah, and then the back, and then he, and then it, like you just see something in the back of his head go right foot, and he goes, <laughs> and then he lifts it. <laughs> and then, but I mean, it's it's I'm already you could already be putting a T down. Yeah, and like the other guy's already <laughs> about to hit. Ah, <laughs> oh, look at that! All right, yeah. um, so. Also during the Middle Ages, Islam started. Mm-hmm. Muhammad lived during the Middle Ages. He started Islam in Mecca, became a uh, obviously a major religion. At the at its height, it was three times bigger than all of Christianity. Mm-hmm. Can't so, joke about that, so let's move on. All right. No reason to tell that is because that's when the... <laughs> The crusade started. You guys heard of the crusades? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Just in general. Yeah. yeah. I've heard some stuff. Yeah. I've heard it mentioned. That was basically wars that went on for years and years and years between Christians and Muslims because the uh, Catholic Church wanted to take back the Holy Lands. And so... Well, I'm glad they figured that out. <laughs> yeah. uh, glad they got that all sorted yeah. out, dude. Yeah. yeah. Can yeah. you imagine they still, <laughs> if someone from the Middle Ages shows up today, y'all are still fighting? And you're like, yeah, dude, I don't know. We're just always going to keep doing it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's basically true. The Knights Templar was a group of devout Christians that fought to allow people to visit the Holy Lands, um, travelers, and they became fierce fighters during the Crusades. Some people say they went underground 700 years ago and still exist today. Oh, what They're are they doing? still alive today. So not how, alive, how old would they be? No, I, I no they, not the actual. I think they just fit the order, not new the members, not yeah. the people. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> They'd be pretty old. You think they want to die? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you think they wake up every morning and go, "Come on!" <laughs> what am I? Th- Twelve hundred years old. <laughs> Uh, let me give you some people from the Middle Ages. Uh, two out of these five aren't real. See if you guys can guess okay. which ones aren't real. Um, did any of them, did you go to school with any of them? <laughs> okay. That's sorry. why I removed myself <laughs> from yeah. this. One of them is going to be Brian Bates. <laughs> You're like, well, that's real. Okay. Joan of Arc, King Arthur, Robin Hood, William Wallace. That's who Mel Gibson played in Braveheart. And Marco Polo. Okay. Who's not real? Two of those five probably aren't real. Yeah. Okay. I would almost say uh is uh Robin Hood I don't think is is real. And then uh I think he's based on a real. It's almost like they're Paul Bunyan over there. I would go oh. I yeah. would go Robin Hood and William Wallace, not real. William Wallace is for sure a real person. That's Mel Gibson. <laughs> <laughs> Mel Gibson's real too. <laughs> I guess if we're technically, right. then yeah, I guess he is. But well, yeah, I, William Wallace is is a real guy. Joan of Arc was definitely real. I think maybe King Arthur. That's my sleeper pick. King Arthur, not based on a real. And who else? Real person. What are the other ones? Robin Hood and Joan, Marco, Polo. Marco Polo. Marco Polo is real. So yeah, we'll do Robin Hood and King Arthur. You're correct. <laughs> there we go. I mean, they are based maybe on some. Some real people, but they're. I thought about Braveheart was like that was like kind of like a. I thought it had been a made up guy. Well, I think they dispute it, uh, you know, because um, in the movie, yeah, William Wallace has a kid with the princess, yeah, and that would completely taint the bloodline of English yeah. kings, yeah. So Scotland claims that that's what happened, and then England's like, no, that never, yeah. that never happened. So there's some. Dispute over what happened, I think. So if I'd have watched Braveheart recently, I'd have been like, I know he's real. 
They probably. Put I thought some. it'd be you know where I'm hood. There's a bunch of movies. Yeah, I thought it was like that. Oh, okay. Like, like the, he like almost a, like a little mythical figure. Yeah, yeah. William Wallace was real. He used to do. Mm-hmm. He was so much more violent in real life than he is in the movie. He used to make. He used to scout people and make belts out of their oh, their gosh. skin. Yeah, he was ruthless. You know a lot about him. What do you think he would <laughs> during the <clears throat> the farting show? Do you think he would <laughs> enjoy it, or would he be just no fun all the time? <clears throat> I mean, you think he ever was fun? I think a lot of I'm guessing a lot of these people that live back then, there's just very little joy in their lives because they just couldn't afford to. They just had to. They woke up and worked all day, and then they went to bed. Yeah, and then that's pretty much it. Yeah. And they may not know any better, so they may have found joy other ways. Yeah. You mentioned going to the dentist, um, how that was. Most people couldn't afford a doctor or a dentist, so they went to the barber. And that's how they got treated, by the barber. Like he would do all of Mm. of it? Yeah. Yeah, he would do all of it. So the barber pole, the red and white barber pole, that came from red red blood. Yeah. And um, like... Because they would do a lot of bloodletting. Bloodletting was their big go-to thing back then. Yeah, which is just literally letting out some blood. Yeah, that's all they need to do. They're like, let's try to just get for some it, of this for blood everything blood. for all everything. problems. Let's get the blood out and see if that helps. I, you know, there's times I feel like I could lose a little bit. <laughs> you know, it's all in there. Yeah. You're not putting any do in. Just take something yeah. out. I feel yeah. like it's a little too. Yeah. I mean, the other thing, if they it was leeches for the same reason mm-hmm. to get the blood out, they put leeches on you. Yeah, but the barber pole is what you gripped. Um, when they're drawing the blood out of you, just to hold on to, for because of the pain. Yeah. So that's how they knew if this barber also did dentist and medical stuff. He had a barber pole out front. I mean, that was like pain, where <clears throat> you know, like now, like uh, when a woman gives birth, they're like you're going to never know that pain. And yeah. Like you almost could never say that back then. Yeah. <laughs> get, like a woman, just it's like I've given birth, and the guy's like, "Are you crazy?" <laughs> like I cut my hand off <laughs> and I, I've been shot. I've been hit by 50 arrows <laughs> yeah. and still walking around. And then I got to go let blood out mm. like every there's, a, but that, not that women, women are going through that pain, but right. there's so much pain yeah. that there's just, you know, they're like, ah, it's, it's, it's a lot of all pain. It's a real creepy thing to pay homage to. You like, mean like now modern barber day poles? barbers still have use those poles. It's like, you don't have to do all that. I, yeah. Most people probably don't know what they symbolize. Well, I think there's blue in them now. There is, yeah. And so that makes it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Had so, you heard. Let's all get rid of the past, Aaron. Is that what you'd <laughs> rather have? Sorry. Mr. Friendship. Yeah. Had you heard that I grew up and somebody told me, hey, your blood is actually blue. Yeah. Until it hits air. Until it hits air and it's red. And yeah. I believe that for a long time. Yeah, so and that's it's not true. It's not true, apparently. Yeah. Do you know if it's red I think or blue? I've heard of it, but I think it looks blue in your skin. In your veins? Because like your, your veins, veins look green, yeah. and you think, oh, it's blue. Yeah. But so I think that's totally made up. Yeah. Mm. Well, yeah. Okay. Took off. Wow. <laughs> All right. Thanks. I want to let that air on your on y'all's podcast, <laughs> and we're going to cut it out of the Nate We'll cover podcast. that on Aaron Land, yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> we'll, Aaron Land. We'll dive into that. Dive what into color it. is your blood, really? Yeah. Uh, the other thing, if you weren't <laughs> if you weren't doing bloodletting and leeches, or couldn't go to a a uh, a barber for your medical treatment, can you imagine not being able to afford that? The barber? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you, you going? Oh, I'd love kill to go to barber. You're like, what do you do? I, what do I do? I fall, throw myself down a cliff. That's like, what else could you do? Can you imagine if he did all that to you though? And he's like, anything else? Well, while I'm here, a little touch yeah. up. Well, like he also does your hair. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He washes the blood off and they give you a trim. And then just the pain of that, you're missing that. That hurts worse. Yeah. It probably does. You're not washing your hair. You know, are they washing your no. I doubt it. Is soap around? I mean, is there well deodorant hadn't been invented yet? I think that was that's a deodorant's a very recent invention. Mm-hmm. And it was like the solution to a problem that nobody thought was a problem. Yeah. Everybody just smelled bad all the time and yeah. nobody cared. And then somebody was like, we can get rid of that. And now we all have to do it. Yeah, we could all just agree to not wear deodorant, you know. Yeah, but it's you got it's it's a long time of like getting used to that. I don't wear deodorant that much. I wear it. Uh, I'm not the biggest sweater in the world. Yeah, and so uh, if I know I'm gonna be outside, uh, so I didn't put on deodorant today. I 
Did I? We know. No, like, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I don't really stink. Yeah. Like it's a like, I, I don't. But I'm I, saying it's a, it's a solution to a problem that we created. I know. I'm saying I don't do yeah, it. Yeah, I know. I'm saying we all agree. Yeah, I'm saying we could all agree, and you'd be you don't even have to do it ever. Yeah, because they it's not good. Too they people say it's not good to put it, put a mm-hmm. deodorant on. Put too much. Yeah. I do it when I go out, like if I'm going somewhere. But I, but I just don't like if I'm golfing, if I'm doing stuff during the day, I'm around the house. I'm like we sweat. Like I just don't have to. Why isn't it good? It's uh, I don't, you know, whatever. All time whatever the new rules that you can't do anything. Yeah, sure. I'm sure if something, just someone says, it. I don't know the exact <laughs> reasons. Yeah. But just like anything, you can't do, you can't do that anymore. I put know? it on all the. I put it on before I go to bed. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. Why? Well, Cause you gotta get up and go somewhere. <laughs> Like the ER? <laughs> yeah. Because your armpits can't breathe because they're being smothered. I don't want to smell bad ever, dude. I know. I don't. No one does. But mm-hmm. you're, I mean, for someone that was just trying to t- get us to all not wear deodorant <laughs> to then say, I put it on when I sleep. Look, well, I'm saying. I don't think you would go along with the deal that we made. And I'd just be the only good smelling guy I think in I would the world. Really, you're like, Aaron always smells well, wonderful. I'm saying <laughs> as long as we live in this world. Where everybody has to wear deodorant, I'll play the game. Yeah, <laughs> you know. When was it but, invented? Mm, the good 80s? question. Good question. By the way, our blood is red. I looked. It up. Yeah. <laughs> I looked it up just to make sure <laughs> that it was a bunch of blood doctors in the comments won't get mad. All right. All so, right. So another big nineteen tens uh, deodorant. Mm-hmm. Okay. So another big medical thing people would do is just beat themselves. They just whip themselves or have a friend with them. They're called flagellants, not flatulence, but flagellants, I think it's how it's pronounced. And they basically thought That's man, that's a close I know. They, they say that. I'm flagellant. You're like, oh. He goes, no, 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 no. With the whip. You go, oh, oh yeah, my uncle's about to. Sorry. Um, they thought if they had any type of disease or sickness that God was punishing them. So they would whip themselves to try to like punish themselves for their sins, thinking mm. God would then forgive them and heal them. And this was a big thing to just go around and publicly whip yourself for atonement mm. for sins. And when the Black Death came to hit Europe, I wonder if that's like someone that talks with their speakerphone now. <laughs> you, you know, mean? is it is it that annoying? <laughs> yeah. If you're just in line. <laughs> Getting bread and then he's just bash, he's just slap Kroger and you're like, oh god, yeah. You have to do it the whole time, dude. You can't not. Uh, excuse me, sir. You can't wait and maybe just whip yourself outside like all of us do. You got to do it with everybody sitting here. You've hit me three times and I'm in wonderful shape right now. Um. So. The Black Death, the bubonic plague, was the worst pandemic in history. Well, they haven't seen COVID. <laughs> this lasted it for about three years. It killed 20 million people in Europe. 30% of the continent died. <laughs> I mean, that's a so, third. That's, just, that's, <laughs> that's a, a lot of people. That's a big one. <laughs> uh, 12 ships sailed into the Black Sea in Italy. And when they arrived, <laughs> they were almost all dead, the soldiers. They were oozing blood and pus. And Jeez. they all die eventually. And a lot of people would just go to bed at night feeling healthy and be dead by morning. Oh, it was that quick? According to the Wikipedia. Wow. <laughs> yeah. What it, was it? It was like... The bubonic plague. Black Someone's plague. like, it's a cold. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it's, it's someone's starting. What is it? A little stronger flu? <laughs> and he goes, he's sweating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just let some blood out. <laughs> It'll yeah. be fine. It killed cows, pigs, goats, chickens, and sheep. Mm. Led to a wool shortage in Europe. Um, Start taking out. COVID's not taking out animals, is it? I don't think no. so. That's crazy. So flagellates became a big thing. Everybody going around whipping themselves to try to get healthy. <laughs> did, it work? did it work? No, it did not. No, we're still talking about the black plague so <laughs> not uh that's man that's that's a pretty wild that's so many people yeah a third almost what it, was it a virus yeah yeah it was yeah. rats didn't it start with rats yeah uh scientists believe the plague started through the bite of an infected flea or rat both which were common in the middle ages especially on ships mm. they, they would eat rats 
uh, a flea. That oh, bitter, oh, bit, bit bitter a rat. person. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the bit a rat that yeah. bit a person. The rat bit the person. Either a flea or a rat, they think. Got yeah. it. Just like the bat, yeah. they think, for uh, COVID. Could they have ever figured that out back then? I don't think so. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. How, do they, how do they know? Like, is there, do they even, are they just going, something's up? It's yeah. Like, I mean, people are just dying. Yeah. Like, yeah, do they even have any concept of like this of what a virus is back then? Probably not. I mean, people right? are dying just regularly. Just like if they're during this time, during the great moments of it, people are just dead. <laughs> and then so now it's like I know it's like a rapid kind of thing. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, I don't even think they would think about quarantine. I mean, I'm sure you just think I'm gonna stay in my house and keep away from everybody. Mm-hmm. But I don't think you're thinking about did the people that survived, the seventy percent that survived, were the do you think that they just had a genetic immunity to it or they just got lucky, I guess? Was it I don't know. Oh. Did you stay home a lot during it? <laughs> That's how you asked that question. Like he was a part of it. You're like, yeah. did your parents you said your aunt got it, right? And so did y'all not see her? That's how that question is that <laughs> like he was there. <laughs> like he's just, Hey, we're just two guys in our forties. <laughs> two guys born in the seventies, graduated high school in the nineties. That's what we are. So yeah, the Black Death was uh it was bad. <laughs> it was much worse. Um a lot of uh sayings came from the Middle Ages that we say today that well maybe you don't, but a lot of people do. Um Baker's dozen. Mm. <clears throat> I used to uh would do we were talking about being a wrestler and I would uh what would I say? I'd want to be the I'd want to be the Baker's dozen. <laughs> As uh, that was my wrestling move. The big, uh, what is it? I don't remember what it was. <laughs> what was it? It was something like that. The the bake. I was called the baker. <laughs> my wrestler. My, I would have been. I would have been the baker, <clears throat> and my move would have been the baker's dozen. Okay. <laughs> you give them one more after they're it'd done. Been, yeah. yeah. It'd been twelve punches, and then is a stone it? cold stunner. Oh, a thirteenth right on top. Yeah. Oh right. wow. I like that. Right. I just made that up. That part I made up right now. <laughs> Because I don't remember what it was before. <laughs> but I was the baker. Nate the baker. And then my buddy P, we'd call him PP the pronoun. <laughs> and he would come in and teach a lesson on. <laughs> <laughs> I forget what his move was. But his, his nickname was P. PP and the pronoun. PP the pronoun. <laughs> Nate the baker and PP the pronoun come in. I can't believe they didn't take off. <laughs> But basically, bakers were accused of selling underweight loaves, so legislation was put in place to make sure they didn't. So to make sure they didn't sell underweight, they would start giving an extra piece of bread away for with every loaf. Loaf. Because hmm. they were, oh, so they had to give. Yeah. They had to give another one. Yeah. Yeah. And then someone's like, I'm doing it already, and they will give an extra. <laughs> well, then they for sure probably went low. Uh-huh. Yeah. It was almost like, oh, well, we were giving you a full, and now we're not. <laughs> uh, nest egg. Peasants used to collect eggs from chickens, and they would leave one egg in there to, it would encourage the chickens to continue laying eggs in the same nest. So now it's, uh, now it's thought of as like something you keep. Mm-hmm. You nest know, egg? Yeah, a little extra money on the side, but it was done to keep an egg in there to keep the hens from keep the hens laying eggs in that same area. Mm. I mean, just explaining this to these people now, <laughs> like, cause the nest egg is, that's like retirement, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. Just something insane. Like we talk about that. Oh, you're keeping a little nest egg. Yeah. Nice little nest and egg. And they'd be like, well, that doesn't make sense. Cause it's, what it means is <laughs> an actual egg. <laughs> no, we just get our eggs from the public. From the store. Yeah. Sink or swim <laughs> this is a good one. It's a medieval practice of judging whether a person was innocent or guilty by ha- casting him or her into a lake. The belief was that water would not accept anyone who had rejected the water of baptism. So if the victim sunk, they were innocent, but if they floated, they were guilty. So either way, you're not going to... I mean, were people learning how to swim back then? I think they would like tie you. Like You couldn't just try to swim. Like, oh. They tie you up and throw you in. And if you floated, then you're guilty. I mean, were there people floating? Probably not. <laughs> I can yeah. float. Huh? I can float. But if you're tied to something. Oh. Not maybe you're just your arms are like, like not a weighted, dunk tank not weighted down, but 
but you can't. I don't think swimming was allowed. If you're if you're looking at it going well one way or the other way, there has to be the other way has to have worked, or you wouldn't be no other way. You know, mm-hmm. someone's got to go. They're gonna, you know, there's not a person going. They're gonna sink. Everybody sinks. Mm-hmm. You're mm-hmm. tying a, a boulder. Yeah, some to people them. must have been floating. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because hmm. then you're like, oh, okay. And one guy floats, and then they look back at him and like, oh, where are you at now? He goes, okay. Well, now I'm a little convinced. Yeah. Either way, you're probably going to die. You're either going to drown or found guilty, and then they'll kill you. If they yeah. think you or they think you're a witch anyway. Yeah. Yeah. No one, they, yeah. I mean, once you get called the witch, there's, I don't think there's much. Mm-hmm. I don't think you get out of it. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> you don't, there's no talking. There's not like, all right. Everybody's got to like kind of looking at you like, why did I even, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you're not going to. You're not gonna once a witch, always a witch. Like you're, <laughs> right, you're not gonna rebrand yourself. Yeah, stereotyped. Yeah. yeah, there was a lot of people being called witches during the Black Death. By the way, a lot of people thought that uh, they were causing it. Yeah. Uh, pay through the nose. The Vikings were did this. If someone did not pay, they suffered punishment by having their nose slit. No, wait, it's kind of a weird, you know, your nose slit. Yeah. How? I don't. I don't know if I want to know. Okay. Probably a knife. Yeah, yeah I know, but in what way? Probably like, cut. Voldemort. Type? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Vikings did whatever they wanted to do. Yeah. yeah. They were kind of their own. They beat at their own drum. Mm-hmm. Also, <laughs> probably the Middle Ages. Probably so. Don't kill the messenger. I think you guys could probably figure that one out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A lot of messengers were. <laughs> being killed after they brought the king bad news. So finally, laws were enacted to protect messengers from such events. Oh, that was don't kill the messenger was a law. Yeah, okay. yeah, that's like the well. Then, then the court gesture. Yeah, he's like, I'll tell him. <laughs> I'll make it funny. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Bouncers, bouncers came from the Middle Ages. Oh wow! They used to make you give a coin before you walked into a tavern. Coin. <laughs> okay. Sorry, what did I say? <laughs> Cone, cone, <laughs> basically cone. I don't know. Coin, a coin, a coin. Yeah. <laughs> oil. Yeah, I know. I say stuff wrong. No, I say it like that too. Yeah. Wheel and wheel. People are still confused about what yeah. we're talking about. Wheel and wheel. We've done it wheel. twice, and yeah. they're like, "We have no idea what you guys are yeah. talking about." A coin. You had to give it the front of the door, and the guy at the door would bounce it to see if it was real or not. And if it didn't bounce, that means it was a fake. Coin, coin, mm. uh, and then now we have bouncers. So the guy at the door was there to check. Yeah, yeah. Now yeah. they just do with IDs. But that's why yeah. they're called bouncers. Yeah, is because they still throw IDs at the ground yeah. to see if that's they're crazy real. that these words stay around. I know mm-hmm. that is. This is a lot of words that you hear. Get off your high horse. Yeah. Stuff you don't even think mm. about. I uh, think of that a lot. <laughs> you think about what it means? No, just what I to yeah. a lot of people. <laughs> It was. Uh, I say this one regularly. Go ahead. <laughs> During the noble times, nobles were given a taller breed of horse to ride to signify mm-hmm. their status and authority. Often, commoners would tell each other to get off their high horse when one was acting like a nobleman. Makes perfect sense. I think they measure the horses. You know. I think they're just so much bigger. You don't need to measure them. They're just yeah. like a different breed. Oh, like the what is the they in could- Ezra Bush ones? <laughs> The Clydesdales. Clydesdales. They could have all been on miniature horses, and they wouldn't know. And then yeah. you give the nobles real horses. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, I think if someone listened to this podcast in the Middle Ages, they would turn it off, and they would be—they wouldn't even understand what they're hearing because it's technology. They would think it's magic, and they would, but they would go, "God, just they still would, bored." They would still get so bored with, it. bored with just. Uh, I mean, it'd be witchcraft if we dumped this Nate Land podcast into the six hundreds. They would turn. They would ask. Their first thing they would do is find the off button. <laughs> <laughs> you want to hear this thing? Ah, yeah, I'm good. Can I give a couple more? Yeah, yeah. Caught you red-handed. Mm. Uh, this phrase comes from the 12th century practice of dipping a thief's hand in berry dye. The dye was soaked into the skin and stained the hand for several weeks and so- serve as an act of public humiliation of being convicted. 
All who saw the redheaded person knew he was a thief and a criminal. Wow. You didn't get, a little, you didn't get away with a lot of stuff back then. Nope. You know? It was, what do you mean? I mean, your hand's red for a month after you do something. I know, but it was probably hard to get caught. But if you, you did know? get but caught. But if you did get but caught. But you did get caught, like, yeah, you're, they weren't going to take it easy. On yeah. You. You're going to pu- publicly know about it. All right. Xerox. <laughs> that was actually a person. It was yeah. a scribe who copied a bunch of history into different languages. Um, so the company was named after him because they're a copy company. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll do one more here. Um, <laughs> Nate Senior Ford, like God, wrapped us yeah. up. Please, <laughs> there's Xerox. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I'd like to explain him what goes on at the real Xerox <laughs> store. And he goes, "Where do y'all write all the stuff down?" They go, "Oh no, most of us can't even write." Uh, and he goes, "Wow." Uh, I'll give one more. Um, give someone the cold shoulder. In the Middle Ages, lords and nobles were often faced with the common problem of getting rid of unwanted or obnoxious guests at feasts and gatherings. Um, So they would serve the guests a cold shoulder of meat, the toughest and most undesirable portion of a roast. This was a symbol in giving the guests enough of a hint that he or she have overstayed their welcome. Yeah. Mm, (laughs) This looks good. Um, Talk about mm, passive aggressive. Did you guys heat? (laughs) He starts just touching everybody else's... And he's like, huh. <laughs> <laughs> but, and it would just be the guy that eats it. Yeah. And just goes, no, nah, I love the cold shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> How many of those guys were up there? Just won't be take a lot the hint, just won't. Yeah, they yeah. go, you know what? I ask for the cold shoulder. <laughs> just the toughest part mm. of the one. Uh, all right. Is there, I mean, was there other, there's like a lot more? I mean, there's a few more here. Apple of my eye. Oh, God. I thought you meant like more other stuff besides sayings. Oh, all mean, right. We'll wrap it up then. Yeah. Uh, I, mean, yeah, uh, I, I thought you meant Oh, fake. goodness. Uh, <laughs> Wait, what is Apple of my eye? Tell me, tell yeah, me afterwards. We'll what is tell Apple of my eye? You might as well say now. Uh, the pupil of the eye was known as the apple because <laughs> <laughs> if so, it was the most cherished part yeah. of the eye. Because yeah. <laughs> so they it's a big it. deal. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, we got one more. That was the worst one. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't going to tell him, but then I thought I know, that's what he was asking know, for. I'm sorry. Yeah. I lobbied for it, man. I was like, we'll get him back with this one, Brian. No, I was going to hit him we'll cold him. shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know when I said, is there more? I thought that meant like, is there another like little fact? All right. I'll throw out one more little fact. I just yeah. listened to what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> we hit them all. <laughs> Valentine's Day. Yeah. Started during the Middle Ages, at least mm-hmm. the romantic Valentine's yeah. Day that we know of. Saint Valentine was a saint from much earlier, but Jeff- Jeffrey Chaucer, the medieval poet, mm-hmm. invented the holiday around 1375. He wrote a poem celebrating Saint Valentine's, and then a guy in prison, Charles Duke of Orleans, wrote a letter to his wife and called her his Valentine. Mm. And that's how the holiday started being celebrated on February 14th. Because that's when that letter was written? Well, it's, February 14th is known as a day when birds and humans both go in search of mates. <laughs> <laughs> that's the day? <laughs> just, just that day? Just that day. I guess they did back then, too. Humans? <laughs> I mean, yeah. We did Middle Ages. <laughs> we did it. It had some good times. Yeah, There's yeah, a few yeah. things we learned, it's right? It's a lot like the Middle Ages. Like yeah, some highlights, some highs and lows. Highs and lows. The Renaissance mm-hmm. came after the Middle Ages. Yeah, that's when things started taking off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, paintings, right. culture. That'll be our, ne- our next episode. <laughs> is there? Not. Yeah, is the Renaissance? The Renaissance, right? The Vinci, I would like to learn about the Renaissance. Mm-hmm. I do like hearing this stuff. Yeah, I do. Oh, okay. uh, I some of it, but I just also think, <laughs> you know, people are listening. You know, <laughs> <laughs> and that's. <laughs> that's where you gotta. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's who you gotta think about. Get off your get off your high horse. Get man. off your high horse. Yeah. Not trying to give the cold shoulder here, but this episode was not the apple of my eye. Uh, all right, everybody. Thanks for listening, Nate Land. We will talk to you later.